Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. And if you are new here, well, just keep in mind that these build videos are focused around Warframe and weapon synergies, with all the other endgame loot in between. Today we're revisiting the Shinobi Ash build, reflecting on all the recent changes to the game to create this new loadout simply named Shinobi Ash 2. Ash. So just before we jump into all the Shinobi Ash 2 builds and loadouts and all that jazz, why don't we quickly just compare what has actually changed from the old Ash build to Shinobi 2. So old Ash was light and heavy attack focused with Exodia Brave to gain energy, with Zenuric in a might, uh, Seeking Shuriken spamming and of course Magus Anomaly to group enemies up. Shinobi 2 however is a light and dot focused build with melee strikes. AoE range utility with Exodia Hunt to group enemies up, Naramon for a combo and shield gating also thrown in there. We have two forms of CC and AoE utility here using the new core that spans to all the targets and the Ferox there to snare enemies together. Here it is in action, I place the Ferox down in this choke point here, go and check on the siphon real quickly and then jump back down to the tunnel to take out the enemies snared there. It's really cool, I love this setup. Not gonna lie, it's kind of satisfying just to see the lightning raining from the ceiling. <laughs> well, while we're here we might as well go through the Ferox utility snare build first. Now, in my previous videos featuring the Ferox, there is some things that I got wrong and I want to correct them now in this build. So additional status chance, multi-shot mods and firestorm definitely do not affect the tether from the throne Ferox. So uh, we're gonna go for additional sprint speed, a corrosive and blast combo uh, because we're going to be getting heat elsewhere with twitch for holster speed so we can pull this out real quickly more status duration and fire rate to help tick the status quicker just like the previous shinobi ash we have a brand new custom made set fanzor the parts are underneath the title right there so guys if you're in the comment section wondering what it is just please look at the title <laughs> okay bet you anything there's still going to be some one eh Anyway, so Blind Justice in the stance mod here, just mainly for the forward block combo, has some ground slams to proc Exodia Hunt. We have Condition Overload, which is going to be bolstered a hell of a lot with our utility weapons. Blood Rush for crit chance, Weeping Wounds for additional status. Primed Reach for obviously melee range. Berserker to ramp up fast attack speed, which is essential. Um, a Bane mod that you will probably swap out, uh, depending on which faction, obviously, you're fighting. You have Primed Fever Strike for a huge amount of Toxin Damage and Organ Shatter for critical damage. I do have this for a Riven, it actually takes my crit damage a little bit further down but I can get more guaranteed red crits with that additional crit chance. As mentioned I am using Exodia Hunt to pull enemies in from afar, it's a great CC tool and I'll be showing you some examples coming on up. To elaborate on the combo with Blind Justice, required to proc Exodia Hunt, you will need to be moving forward while holding the aim slash block button while mashing melee. This results in a dash forward followed by a ground slam. Using this and shield gating along with the Ferox and the Nucor, you've got a lot of CC and capability to actually survive without invisibility at all. Although, however, it's definitely recommended to use a Warframes toolkit to its fullest potential when you can, of course. We do have some footage in action here from a bird's eye view for you to have a look at how nutty this setup is, especially at pulling enemies in using that forward block combo as mentioned. Moving on to some examples on how to do damage with this build. Um, I do recommend if you haven't got a Riven to bolster your crit chance a bit, you might want to use the Deconstructor from the Helios with the Gladiator mods, just to get you those guaranteed juicy red crits, which of course is what this channel is all about. We're just going to build up some combo for these spawns right here, and then we'll do an example of what it's like against some unalerted enemies first, so you can see that stealth damage really take into effect. Using the Nuko here to bolster up a load of damage, and then these, by the way, are just light attacks. 
over 2 million. Um, it's a bit inconsistent sometimes, obviously, because damage is in Warframe is just a bit scuffed at the moment, but uh, yeah, overall I'm pretty pleased with the results. Um, let's probably unpause the AI now though, and uh, see what they're like when they're actually alerted, so we can get a realistic expectation of the sort of damage we can do. Getting a lot of procs there from the Nuko, and see how many status effects are actually applied, and then afterward, stripping their armor and then attacking with just light attacks. We're getting near enough the same damage. It's like 200k less, maybe, give or take, of course. And just keep in mind that this is just the initial hit damage. This is a dot build, so you're doing toxin procs that, and slash procs that are just actually insane. So uh, yeah, things definitely die with this build. Some of you who are a little bit more savvy might have noticed that we're also procking magnetic damage. Now that is from the Kuva Nuko uh, rolled for magnetic on top of it having a base radiation. It will also run magnetic as well. And if we mod it then for viral and heat as well, we have four elements being procked all at once. Here's my build for it. It's the Hornet Strike for core damage. We have Pistol Pestilence, Frostbite for viral and Scorch for additional heat. We have Eject Magazine, uh, so we don't have to reload the weapon, we can just keep slicing and dicing and using this to proc our status effects. Uh, Lethal Torrent, mainly for a bit of fire rate, but also some multi-shot as well. Now Seeker is going to be essential for getting more targets, and uh, Prime Target Cracker and Pistol Gambit to take advantage of that crit multiplier and crit chance here. So you can see we have got Viral, Magnetic, Radiation and Heat. All in the one weapon, which is pretty nutty, I'm not going to lie. You can also maybe try an impact version rather than magnetic, but personally, I don't really think it matters either way. I mean, the magnetic might be decent against heavily shielded enemies in endurance runs. Now, here's an example of the range without punch through. You can see it gets a moderate amount of targets here. What is that? Uh, six, seven or so, give or take. Uh, maybe shoot them a little bit again just to see. It's actually less that time. I think five enemies. So it's it's okay. It still gets quite a bit of enemies there. But still, if we add punch through on, we're going to get way more. But uh, let's just get a bird's eye view so you can see from another angle. Shout out to the Cephalon chat crew. And particularly Jason who is helping out with this footage here. Speaking of which, Cephalon Chat are an up and coming YouTube and Twitch channel who have interviewed the likes of myself, Zandy Pants, and Ludens, and coming soon, the voice actor of Error himself, the new antagonist of Warframe, coming up with a new war. You should definitely go and check him out, guys. Anyway, back to the example, here we are with a new core with Punch Through, and oh my god, we're covering near enough all of them. That's an insane amount of coverage right there. Here is a bird's eye view. Look at that. That's like nearly twice as much, if not more. I'm bad with maths, <laughs> but that's definitely a lot more and you should consider putting punch through on your new core or even maybe getting a ribbon to really maximize the rest of your setup with it. Not to mention that this weapon can just kill outright on its own. And now finally onto the Ash build itself. Now this again is just my personal builds. If you find something a bit more comfortable that you like to play with, by all means use it. I'm just going to show you my experience and what I like to play with. So we have Brief Respite now in the aura to take advantage of shield gating whenever we uh, use our stealth or any ability it's going to gain shields. We have Vigilante Pursuit for enemy radar. We have uh, Primed Continuity and Narrow Minded for duration of our invisibility when we need to use it. Umbral Intensify for seeking shuriken to strip armor 100%. We have Handspring because I don't have primed sure footed yet, which of course you could swap out if you have it. We have Natural Talent for casting speed for the shurikens and the stealth. Primed Flow for additional energy so we can spam more shurikens. Uh, rolling Guard, essential mod for me on most builds now. It's replaced health. Um, this can remove dots and gives you in vulnerability stages for you able to cast abilities or go invisible if you need to. We have Arcane Energize, which I think is always an essential mod to get energy. And we have Arcane Strike for additional attack speed to help spam Exodia Hunt procs. 
That's about it for this video guys, we do have the fashion guide coming in a quick hot second, however I do want to just say a big shout out and thank you to Finigo, PressXJason and Ludens, not to mention all my Twitch family, you guys are freaking awesome and don't forget the Relentless Discord crew as well. Last but not least, the music was supplied by an artist called Kujo, his links are in the description down below as well, please go and support his channel, he's got some insane beats, I absolutely love this track, it's been haunting my dreams. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me now guys, ciao for now.